Hi there, and welcome to our campus tour of the University of Sheffield. My name is Kelton. I'm one of the folks who's going to be showing you around today. I'm a recent graduate who just finished up a BA in history, a three-year degree. Um, and to start with, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of the university itself. We are outside the Students' Union right now. That is kind of the heart of the campus, both sort of metaphorically and physically. It's where a lot of our student activities take place. Uh, but we're going to be getting onto that a little bit later on. To start with, again, an overview of the university itself. The University of Sheffield was founded in 1905 on penny donations from the people of Sheffield. These kind of civic ties to the city is something that Sheffield as a university has maintained for the over 100 years since we've been in operation. The university is a member of the prestigious Russell Group of research-led universities around the UK. And we are also uh, ranked very highly in UK league tables, as well as being ranked in the top 100 universities on the entire planet, which I think is a pretty cool stat. At the moment, obviously due to COVID restrictions, campus is going to look a little bit quiet as we go around, but uh, fortunately that means I won't be bumping into anyone as I'm, um, as I'm walking, so uh, I don't think that's too much of a downside right now. Our university is grouped into five different faculties as an academic institution, and our 50-odd academic departments fit into these five faculties. There is the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, which I was in as a history student. There is the Faculty of Science, Faculty of Social Science, Medicine, Dentistry, and Health, and the Faculty of Engineering. We're going to be seeing a lot of these academic departments as we uh, go around the university today, but our first official stop, if you like, is going to be the Octagon Conference Center. You can see that coming into view just behind me now. The Octagon Center is a conference center, as I say, that plays host to everything from local events all the way through to international conventions. There have been kind of local comedy gigs played here, as well as artists like Amy Winehouse and Nirvana who have kind of uh, come into play, as well as, of course, some of the Arctic Monkeys' earliest gigs being from Sheffield. As well as all of that, some of your student activities will take place here as well. Our Freshers' Fair, taking place in the kind of first week of your first year at university, will be in here, as well as your graduation right through at the end, sort of the bookends of your student experience, if you like. Now, there is a lot of ground we want to cover today, so I'm going to pass you over now to Ellie, who is over in Firth Court, our original university building. She can talk you through a little bit about its history and a little bit more about the building itself. Hi everyone, my name's Ellie and I'm our second tour for this virtual campus tour today. Like Kelton, I graduated from the University of Sheffield last year and I studied a four-year MEng in Chemical Engineering with Biotechnology at Sheffield, which I really enjoyed and I really love my time there, so I'm excited today to be showing you a little bit of what we have to offer on our campus. So here, we're just over the way from the Students' Union where we were earlier, but we're in this amazing Firth Court, Firth Court quad, and this is the original university building we have on campus. As you can see, it's a really nice red brick university building. Um, the court was built in the neo-Gothic style and proven to show that a university in the north of England could, could be just as nice as Oxford and Cambridge and some of the American universities as well, such as Princeton and Harvard. It's a, a really nice place to come and relax with your friends in the summer. A lot of graduation ceremonies are held here. It's a really great place to come and get some nice pictures um, and celebrate your time at university as well. It's also a home to the Department of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology. Um, which a couple of my friends studied and they really enjoyed being able to work in the labs here overlooking this first court, first court quad. It's a really nice place to come and do some studying. But again, the building is open to all university students. So as I said, I like to come here in the summer um, and the social spaces as well as cafes and, and computer rooms and general workspaces to come and do a bit of work um, in a nice setting at university as well. Just behind me, you can just about make out the top of the Arts Tower there, which is our tallest university building that we have on campus. We'll be showing you over there a little bit later, but I think it's really nice to get the contrast of the old red brick, bu red brick buildings on university, contrasting to the really modern buildings as well. Um, and that's home to the departments of architecture, as well as some other different things going on over there too. Also within this quad, we have the Krebs Cafe. Just over, just over my shoulder here, which is named after Sir Hans Krebs, who you might have heard of if you study A-level biology. He discovered the Krebs cycle, um, which is the way that our cells in our body convert glucose or sugar into useful energy, which was a really major discovery that he did. Um, so it's really cool to have uh, a Nobel laureate within the department here and had to have a cafe named after him as well. Just over the other side of Firth Court Quad here as well is our Western Park, which is one of our few different parks we have on campus. It's a really nice space that I like to come to. Again, in the summer, relax with friends. People like to play sports there or have their lunch there as well. 
Um, and actually, after here, I'm going to show, pass you over to Kelton, who's actually in Western Park, and he can show us around the park there and talk about a few more departments that we have on that side of campus as well. All right, so we are now over in Western Park, just on the other side of Firth Court, where Ellie was a moment ago. Uh, and Western Park is one of the many green spaces we have around Sheffield. This is a personal favorite of mine, actually. It's really nice having kind of the duck pond right there, as well as lots of kind of park benches to go around, have a sit down, maybe read a book, something like that. Around this park as well are many of the departments that uh, teach various kind of academic subjects around the university. On the one side, we have one of our medical teaching hospitals, which provides teaching space and facilities for our medical and dental students. On the other, you can just about see there the back of the geography building. Uh, it's a very unusual sort of hexagonal structure building. Um, some people really love it, some people really hate it. It's a bit of a Mormite building, we like to say. Far side of that is Bartolome House, where uh, our law, law department is situated. And just a little bit up the hill from there is our management school, where all of our triple accredited business courses are taught. On the far side of Weston Park as well, we have uh, Sports Sheffield, where many of our sports facilities are, uh, are kind of situated in the Goodwin Sports Center. We have AstroTurf playing fields. There's uh, a bouldering wall in there, which I took advantage of while I was kind of at university. There's an indoor gym, swimming pool with sauna steam rooms. There's archery ranges, squash courts, really everything you can kind of possibly want out of a sports center, I think. Now, of course, you can also see behind me the full length of the Arts Tower, although, again, we will be getting to that in a little while. Uh, quite an iconic building on our campus that you can kind of see from wherever you are. But just below that, I am going to point out as well Western Bank Library. This is one of our several library sites around the campus, and Ellie is inside of there now. She can talk you through a little bit more about it. Hi everyone, so we're now in the main foyer of Western Bank Library, which was one of my favourite spaces to come and study on campus. It used to be the main university library, but our main library is now called the Information Commons, which is affectionately known as the IC, and that's another library that will be showing you a bit later. But this is a predominantly silent study library, so it's a really great space to come and get your head down. If you've got an exam or a stressful piece of coursework coming up, I like to come in here and really study and get your head down. Just over here we have the electronic return systems where you can drop off all the books you might have taken out. Um, we'll be, be telling you more about the library system later. West Bank itself is also home to 1.2 printed articles, textbooks, um, books, basically anything you can need for your studies. There's probably going to be a copy of a really useful source for you here in Western Bank. It also has a really nice outlook over Western Park, the park we were in earlier. So just a really nice peaceful setting for you to come and get your head down and get some serious work done. Next, we're going to pass you over to Kelton, who's outside the Arts Tower, and um, that really amazing building that we saw earlier in the park, and he'll be showing you around that. We're now out here in the Arts Tower car park, just outside Western Bank Library, where Ellie has sent you over to from. From around here, we can see a lot of the different buildings around our central campus, including the Hicks Building, just off on my right there. That is home to the Department of uh, Astronomy and Physics, as well as the School of Maths and Statistics. Just across from there is, of course, our Students' Union, which we had shown you around earlier. And just behind me here is the Alfred Denny Building. The Alfred Denny Building is home to our Department of Animal and Plant Sciences, and is actually built as an extension to the original 1905 buildings around Firth Court. It's also home to the Alfred Denny Museum of Zoology, which is this quite cool building with a lot of kind of uh, specimens and fossils from around the early 1900s when that whole collecting taxidermy thing was at its peak. Right below our feet, not letting any space go to waste, is the Controlled Environment Center. That is a series of laboratories designed for use by APS students to simulate virtually any terrestrial environment on the planet, uh, which is really useful right now for the sake of kind of uh, simulating field work conditions when it's a little bit difficult for them to get out there. If we pan around now, we can just about see the uh, back of Firth Court and around the corner, the Arts Tower, as we have been referencing kind of throughout, very easy to see from anywhere on campus. At 78 meters tall, it's actually the tallest university building in the entire UK. And right at the very top on the kind of 20th floor and those couple below, we have the Department of Architecture and Landscape. I think they have some of the best views in the entire city. Uh, a couple of the floors are used for administration, but uh, right down there at the bottom and into the basement, we have some newly refurbished lecture theaters as well as a cafe for students to attend. I spent quite a lot of time in there myself on my history degree and uh, on a couple of other modules that I took from other degree courses as well. I am going to pass you over now to Ellie, who's just outside the Information Commons, one of our other university libraries that we had spoken about before, as well as uh, some of the other buildings in its vicinity. 
Okay everyone, so we're now outside the Information Commons, which is the main university library on campus. A lot of students call it the IC for short, it's kind of your central hub of uni life, as well as the Students' Union. It's a really popular place to come and study. We have over six different floors in the IC, so you can completely choose the way that you like to study. If you want to work in a silent study floor, or if you want to work in a group room that you can book out with your friends or your course mates, you can bring your laptop there, plug it into the TV. There's lots of whiteboards on the walls where you can work through group problems together. Um, I really liked working in there on group projects. We also have computer rooms as well as every floor will have its own printers, scanners, um, computer, laptop loan facilities, as well as toilets, vending machines. And we have a really great cafe on the ground floor as well. It's really handy to nip in there to get a coffee or your lunch. We also have the, the silent garden space that's recently opened on our ground floor, which is a really nice space to come and relax in between studying. Um, it's a phone free zone, so I like to come in there for 10, 15 minutes at a time, just as a bit of a screen break. Um, but I think that's a really nice initiative that the university has introduced recently too. Just behind me, you can see um, the ring road and this is where our tram tracks are located. So the university has its own tram stop and the trams are really frequent, really cheap if you show your student card and they can take you to Meadowhall Shopping Centre, um, Sheffield Arena, Sheffield Ice Rink, as well as further out of the city centre too. We also have the women's night bus that can take women and girls home from a night out or if they're having a late study session in the library and that's around for our students union they can take you right to your door for just one pound fifty so that's a really handy option as well and we also have the safe ta taxi scheme so this is run in collaboration with sheffield city taxis and if you're on a night out or again late night in the library and you want to get a taxi home you don't have any money or you might not have your debit card on you you can show the taxi driver your u card they'll take you home for free and you'll come pick up your u card the next day and then pay the fare so so I think it's a really great thing that university has put in to kind of ensure well-being and safety of its students as well so you'll never kind of be stuck um, without a way to get home. Having said that Sheffield is a really safe city as well so I've you know I've used it a couple of times I've had a late night in the library and haven't wanted to walk home because I was really tired um, but yeah I really appreciate some of these things they've been putting in. Just behind me as well you can see the Henderson's Relish Factory, the bright orange sign behind me in front of that really nice mural. So this was the original Henderson's Relish Factory, that really popular Yorkshire condiment. Um, but the factory closed and the university bought it and it's used to be turned into a pub in the next few years. Although we do already have loads of places to eat, drink um, on campus as well in our students union. And we also have University Arms which is just, just literally around the, the corner from the IC which is another pub on campus as well. If you follow the tram tracks just to my left and keep walking for about 10 minutes, you'll get to the, the main Sheffield city centre. So it shows you how closely we are integrated into the city. I really like this aspect because I could go and meet my friends after lectures. I could go and get my lunch, meet someone for a drink. Um, I really like this city campus aspect of the university. One of my favourite streets is just down there, about a five minute walk from where we are now, called Division Street, which has so many independent shops, cafes, bars and restaurants. And then just behind me as well, Past the Henderson's Relish Factory is another one of our main pedestrian streets on campus called Levy Groove Road and Kelton's going to take you down that road now and show some of our departments down there. So here we are now just outside the Jessup West building right across the road from the Information Commons. The Jessup West building is home to the departments of History, English and the School of Modern Languages and Cultures as well. I spent quite a lot of time here during my degree uh, in kind of seminar rooms as well as going to office hours. Uh, my dissertation supervisor's office is actually just up in one of those windows as well. Um, so I was in and out of there quite a lot in my third year. In addition to all of these teaching and learning spaces, uh, like many of our buildings on campus that are frequented by students, there is a big old cafe right in the bottom corner there, which is an excellent place to kind of come by, grab a coffee, grab a snack, kind of between classes. It always has a really good buzz. It tends to be full of kind of languages students who are practicing their conversational skills on each other. It was a place that I really enjoyed coming along to. Now, just across from the cafe there is the Blackwell's University Bookshop. Now, Blackwell's is a really great place to come if you do need to buy any textbooks or academic kind of monographs for your course. Uh, they will generally offer student discounts as well as doing price matching with online retailers like Amazon. So it is generally your best kind of first port of call if you do need to acquire anything from your course. Just past the Jessup West building, we also have the Jessup Victorian building, which you can see behind me. 
The Jessup Victorian building was previously the Sheffield Maternity Hospital, but it was closed down and acquired by the University of Sheffield some time back, kind of refurbished, and they took quite a lot of care to ensure that they maintained the look and feel of the outside of the building because it is quite unique to the university and the city of Sheffield as a whole. That's home to our uh, School of Music, so there are quite a lot of kind of offices and practice spaces in there. But additionally, for our music students, if they do want some kind of more technically precise uh, music practice spaces, we have the Sound Cube. Now, the Sound Cube is just on my left here. It's uh, this sort of odd looking uh, black rubber box, effectively, that is designed to dampen sounds from the outside. Uh, so it's really great for our music students who want to go in there and practice or make their own music. There's quite a lot of recording studios in there. And uh, in addition to that, our uh, music school, as well as the University of Sheffield as a whole, is going to become an all Steinway school. We're going to have access to Steinway & Sons grand pianos all across the campus from 2021, which is something we're quite excited about. Just down from the Sound Cube, you can just about make out uh, the University Health Service. The University Health Service is a dedicated GP, which we have on campus specifically for our students. This is a really unique service that is not available at all that many universities around the UK where effectively you kind of sign up in your first week and then throughout your time at university, you can drop in there for any problems that you might have medically, uh, just like any other GP service. I think it's a really useful thing to have, just kind of specifically devoted to the students at the University of Sheffield. A little bit further down Levy Grieve, uh, you'll be able to find the Diamond as well as a number of our other teaching facilities. But I am going to pass you to Ellie now, who will be able to walk you through the Diamond and some of the facilities that are available inside of there. So here we are outside the Diamond. This is our flagship engineering and computer science building. It's just down the way from Levy Groove Road on this pedestrianised area of campus. As an engineering student myself, I spent quite a bit of time in here. It opened just before I started at the university in September 2015. And when it opened at the time, it was the university's biggest investment into teaching and learning at a cost of £81 million as well. So we're going to show you some uh, around the Diamond and show you some of the features in there too. As well as being an engineering building, it's open to all university students as a library space. We have a lot of lecture theatres, seminar rooms, um, labs, offices, computer rooms, uh, virtual reality suites, aerospace simulators, computer labs with all the high-tech software. We have loads going on in the Diamond. So I'll show you in here now. So this is the main foyer, as you can see here on the left, the cafe, which would usually be open. Um, and I used to come here a lot during lectures to get a coffee. I'm just going to use some hand sanitizer. The university and the diamond has been able to stay open um, by using social distancing measures and the students have really appreciated being able to come to the library um, and get a bit of a change of scene from, from working from their bedrooms really. Speaking of libraries, we're now outside the electronic return system. So this is one of our many electronic return systems across campus where you can come to return your university library textbooks that you might take out from the library. The way the library system works is that you can take out any textbook or book from the library for as long as you want and keep it without any fines. If someone else wants the book that you have, you'll just receive an electronic request to return it. Um, and when you do want to return it, you'll just return it to some of those electronic return systems that we saw earlier. So say for example, if you took a book out in Western Bank Library that we saw earlier, but you were in the Diamond that day, rather than having to walk across campus to return it, you would just return it to one of these electronic return systems. Um, and then you wouldn't need to walk across campus to return it really. So if we keep walking down here, we're going to show you some more of the ground floor of the Diamond. Just down these stairs here, we have a basement where most of our lecture theatres are. So the Diamond is home to seven different lecture theatres, varying in size, uh, the largest is Lecture Theatre 1 that we're going to show you around the corner here. It's worth mentioning as well that as a library, the Diamond gives you access to Star Plus, which, which is our electronic resource library, where you can take out any textbook or journal article and look at it online on a PDF version for free. Um, and every university student has access to this. So here we are outside the windows overlooking Lecture Theatre 1. You can see all the rows of students would be sat here, a lecturer at the front delivering a presentation. And as an engineering student, I spent the majority of times in lecture theatres like these, as well as in labs. 
Whereas if you're a social sciences student or an arts and humanities student, you might spend more time in seminars and tutorials, which are usually smaller groups of students. Um, you and an academic would discuss a certain topic together or an essay title, and then you'd go away and write that essay or answer some example problems based on that topic as well. Something else that's worth mentioning is we're outside the diamond pilot plant now. And this is a piece of equipment that I got to use in my third and fourth year of my degree. And it's a bit of a mouthful, but the pilot plant is the only continuous powder manufacturing facility in any UK university, which just sounds a bit complicated, but it's really cool. It's a piece of equipment where staff from kind of pharmaceutical companies like GSK, Pfizer, AstraZeneca can come here to use the equipment, learn about what Sheffield has learned about pharmaceuticals from it and use the research and the staff and the knowledge that we have here to improve their own companies. So as I said the, the diamond you know is a library itself so this means we don't just have the ground floor with all the lecture theatres we have a lot of different space up here as well so we have over four floors of library room. So I'm going to show you the entrance to the main library foyer as you can see, there's this really nice kind of high height um, and it shows you all the different floors of the diamond right up to level five right at the top. So we'll go up the stairs here. And this is the main foyer of the diamond up here. So just through those scanners here, um, I had a lot of labs on the room on the left sorry, on the right, I had a lot of first year labs in there, kind of doing a lot of practical work, putting what you were learning in lectures into practice. Um, and it was really nice to get the kind of hands-on um, experience and knowledge really. On the left over here, we have the iForge space, which is a student-run maker space, um, where you can basically make whatever you want. It's basically a bit like a giant DT workshop. Um, you can use the 3D printers, handheld tools, laser cutters in there. Um, and it's really great because it's completely student run. You don't have a lecturer looking over your shoulder, looking at what you're doing, asking what you're making. A friend of a friend of mine in third year went in there and made a bedside table for his bedroom. So you can do completely whatever you want in there. It's also useful for group projects as well as more general kind of extracurricular activities in there as well. It's a pretty cool space and it's completely free to use and again open to every student of the university, not just engineering students. The diamond has some really nice windows and kind of viewpoints I think as well and this is one of the really nice views overlooks St George's Church, um, which is a church we have on campus. There's also a lecture theatre space and I'm going to pass you over to Kelton now who's outside there and he'll be showing you around. St George's Church as well as a couple other departments over that way too. So we're now here just on the other side of St George's Church which is uh, another one of our academic buildings around the university campus. St George's was originally an Anglican church but after it was kind of decommissioned uh, it was acquired by the university, refurbished, and it's now actually a lecture hall and event space. So just kind of in the middle there it's a really cool sort of environment to sit down there to hear some lectures. Um, and actually both uh, up both sides we have some student accommodation in there as well. Uh, there are these very cool kind of student flats that have stained glass windows from the original structure inside. I've always been a little bit jealous of, uh, of folks who got to live in there. But speaking of student accommodation, we can just about see from here Broad Lane Court, which is one of our city accommodation uh, sites, which is uh, just on the other side of Allen Court as well. Those are very popular with students who want to have a slightly shorter walk into campus uh, than our kind of larger sites out at Ranmore and Encliffe. Unfortunately, we're not be able, uh, going to be able to visit those today, but um, you can go online and check out some of the 360 video tours of those if you'd like. They're on the far side of the Students' Union, about a 15-20 minute walk away. A couple of the other buildings in this vicinity include uh, the buildings down Mappin Street. So just down this way, you can see uh, 9 Mappin Street, which is um, uh, one of our kind of university buildings that has seminar rooms and such like that, and just across from that, we have our departments of journalism and economics as well. Journalism is one of our very high ranking courses at the University of Sheffield. Uh, and actually just recently, uh, the university invested three million pounds in refurbishing the journalism suite in there, putting in some studios and recording rooms, as well as uh, kind of newsrooms as well for journalism students to use. Just a little bit further down Mappin Street, maybe a two minute walk, you come to West Street, 
which is one of the main streets that kind of goes up through the Sheffield city center. It's a really great place with a bunch of kind of student bars and clubs, as well as a really big Tesco, great place to kind of nip down to grab yourself a sandwich for lunch or something like that. If we pan a little bit further around here, we will also see the Mappin building. The Mappin building is another one of our kind of original red brick university buildings uh, at the University of Sheffield. And it's kind of the far end of the campus where the university was originally founded. It is home currently to our engineering departments, and Ellie is just inside our brand new heart space area, and she'll be able to talk to you a little bit more about that. So we're now in the engineering heart space, which Kelton mentioned earlier. This is the creation of a brand new quadruple height atrium between the Sir Frederick Mappin building on my left and the Central Ring building on my right. So these are the two of the original Red Brick University buildings on our campus. And as you can see, they built this really amazing and modern atrium between the two buildings. It's also really sustainable and environmentally friendly. It's really warm in the winter and really cool in the summer. It's always the perfect temperature. I like to come in here to grab a coffee. Um, there's a really great cafe just behind me there that does a really wide range of food. It's also a great place to come with your laptop, do a bit of work, chat with a friend. The engineering heart space and the mapping buildings are home to several different engineering departments and disciplines. We also have labs, offices and social spaces as well as computer rooms in here too. But all these buildings are open to students across the university. Um, a lot of my friends studied languages and they loved coming in here to get their lunch, chat with a friend. Um, we have lots of plugs, tables and seats for you to come and do a bit of, a work, bit of work if you want change of scene from the library as well. Just behind me as well, towards the front of the building, we have the engineering employability team. And these are a team of people that are specifically trained to help engineers achieve a graduate job or secure a year in industry placement. So they can help you with CV checks, give you a mock interview, and just general support that you might require when you're looking for a job or a placement. This is in addition to the general career service provided by the university who are really great and this is open to every student of the university and they give you support for looking for a job for up to, up to three years after you graduate as well. The other side of this central ring building, um, I have to give a special shout out to my department building which was the department of chemical engineering. I spent quite a bit of time there in my department building, particularly during my fourth year when I completed my master's research project in collaboration with Nestle, um, the company that make Aero chocolate and Nescafe coffee. And I spent quite a bit of time in their, in their chocolate lab. Um, and you know, that's a nickname that we gave it, but they do genuinely work with coffee and chocolate. And that was a really fun project for me to get involved in during my fourth year. So now you've seen the engineering heart space, one of our newest creations on campus. I'm gonna pass you over to Kelton, who was at, who's at the Students' Union, right off where we started off our tour. So we are back now in the Students' Union building, uh, just inside of where we originally started our tour. Now, Sheffield SU is both a physical location as well as being a sort of organization as well. The Students' Union is powered by students. So there are a number of sabbatical officers every year elected by students to represent kind of different areas of interest. There are things like student welfare and sport, all led by a president. And they kind of ensure that uh, the students' needs and rights are being fought for, and they do a very good job of it too. We have been rated the number one SU in the entire country for the past four years running, uh, which I think is a fantastic stat. And it's really something that you start to see when you start to see some of the activities and facilities that are available to students at the university. Things like the box office, which we've just gone by at the welcome desk, where you can buy tickets to all sorts of events, to things like the student-run cinema that's right below our feet. There's things like the Sheffield SU store. This is a great place to come along to to kind of buy university merchandise, especially good if you want to go in and kind of uh, buy those university colors, the black and gold, um, to represent your university in advance of the Sheffield uh, varsity competition, a sports competition that runs every year between our university and Sheffield Hallam. There's things like the print and design solutions. This is a facility provided for students who want to print leaflets for their society or get a binding for their thesis, things like this. A uh, really great kind of central service that's available to all students. We also have our shop right in the middle of the SU over here. This is a food store that effectively uh, kind of provides a really central great area for students to kind of come in and buy lunch, a couple of snacks, pick up things kind of on their way through campus. There's a really good little uh, international food section that I like going into. A couple of my friends 
were big fans of it. They were able to find things in there that they weren't able to find in kind of regular grocery stores around the city. Just around the corner from there, we have the entrances to our Foundry Club venue. Now, the Foundry is a club venue uh, in kind of just in one of the lower levels of the SU that runs five regular club nights uh, kind of over the course of the month, everything from drum and bass to cheesy pop. It's a really great place, kind of good buzz, and um, I think there's kind of something for everyone there. And one th final thing that I would like to point out while we're here on the plaza is our zero waste shop. So the zero waste shop is uh, another kind of innovation by one of our sabbatical officers, the development officer from a couple of years back. Effectively, it's a place where you can come if you kind of bring your own bag or box to collect groceries or household supplies without worrying about packaging or waste or anything like that. I think it's a really great thing to have kind of centrally here once again, that you can come through and make sure that you have everything you need for your kind of day-to-day -day supplies in your house. I'm gonna pass you over now to Ellie, who's just on the other side of these walls, who's able to talk you through a little bit about the activities and societies that are available at our Students' Union, as well as some of the social spaces. So we're now in the main sports and activity zone within the Students' Union, literally just a couple of steps from where Kelton showed us before, um, just around the corner. And this is, again, one of the main central hubs for a lot of people to come in the SU. In, again, in normal times, it'd usually be really busy. Lots of people sat at the tables here having their lunch. Um, but as well as being kind of a social space, it's also the home of our societies, sports and volunteering too, which are three really great things to get involved in at Sheffield. And we have loads on offer as a Students' Union. So we'll start with societies. So I see societies as basically kind of like clubs, but on a bit of a larger scale. So they're a great, great way for you to meet like-minded people who share same interest or hobby as you. This could be a hobby that you have now that you want to continue at university, or if you want to try out something new for the first time, that's absolutely great too. Um, but a lot of people find it's a great way to make friends outside of their course and flat as well. So you'll generally get to try out lots of different societies in your first year. That's something I definitely recommend doing, trying out as many as you can. It doesn't matter if you don't end up sticking with them long term, that's absolutely fine. We run a really good give it a go scheme as well, which lets you try out lots of societies and sports clubs on a really kind of relaxed, non-committal basis. So you can go to them a couple of times in the first few weeks, see if they're for you. If not, that's fine. And if they are, you know, you can become a fully fledged member of that society. Um, at Sheffield we have over 350 sports and student run societies so we have loads of different ones on offer. Basically anything you could think of we probably have a society for it so we have some really weird and wonderful ones ranging from beekeeping to cocktail making, stationary appreciation society, quidditch, DJ society but if you have a hobby or interest now that we don't have a society for, you're more than welcome and, and encouraged to set up that society yourself and the SU will give you funding to achieve this too, which is pretty cool. Moving on to sports, um, if you're interested in sport or you want to try out a sport for the first time, there's be no better place to do it. You can also compete at a national and an international level too. So lots of people I know compete in the university, you know, football, hockey, netball team, and they go up and down the country on a Wednesday afternoon competing against other universities. And then they'll come back here for one of our student run nights out. Um, sports night is a Wednesday night. And again, this is held in the club that Kelton mentioned earlier, literally under our feet right now is um, a big club venue. And that's a great night. If you want to try out a sport for the first time, again, you can do that through the Give It A Go scheme. Um, and we have lots of different inter intramural sports teams too. So you can, can compete with your course mates. Say there might be a history netball team that might play the English netball team that might play the computer science netball team. So that's a great way to get some really like competitive atmosphere between different departments as well. And a lot of our sports are played at Goodwin Sports Centre that Kelton mentioned earlier. And it's only about a 10 minute walk from the Students' Union as well. So pretty close by. I can't not mention the Sheffield Varsity competition as well, which Kelton briefly ta talked about earlier. And this is an annual sporting competition between us, uh, Sheffield University and Sheffield Hallam University. And we go head to head in lots of different sports and it ends in an ice hockey final, which is the largest collegiate ice hockey game outside of North America, which is pretty cool. I got to go three years during my degree. Um, I went three separate years and each time was a really great event, really great atmosphere. And varsity is just a great excuse to, to get behind your university, get behind the team colours. Again, ours are black and gold. And there's a lot of friendly, competitive rivalry between us and Sheffield Hallam. So it's a really nice atmosphere and a really nice occasion that I definitely recommend going to. 
We also run lots of different volunteering schemes through the Students' Union as well. And right behind me here is our volunteering office where you can come and kind of sign up for different volunteering schemes and meet some people that run them. Um, some volunteering schemes that I got involved in at Sheffield, one of them was called iRise International, which is an international charity that helps to combat period poverty. Uh, a really popular one as well is called Bummit, which is a charity hitchhike to um, a, a place in the UK or usually to somewhere quite far flung off in Europe. And a lot of my friends did this and, you know, they did. They, they literally hitchhiked to another place in Europe or for charity, um, as well as being a great event and, and giving back to people as well. We have really close links with the community here at Sheffield University. So we offer some really well run and really extensive volunteering schemes as well. While we're in the sports and activities zone, I thought I'd just show you Coffee Revolution, um, which is affectionately known as Coffee Revs, and this is one of my favourite cafes within the SU and on campus. Um, it's a pretty, you know, typical cafe offerings, coffee, tea, sandwiches, really nice cakes, biscuits, uh, croissants, but it's just everything's done really nicely. And as you can see, uh, the decoration's really nice. Again, this would be another space that in normal times would be chocker full of people studying, having a coffee, meeting a friend, having a meeting with a lecturer. And we've got these really nice kind of windows where you can oversee the, the main the main SU concourse really. It's got a really nice view where you really feel you're at the heart of the students' union here. But if Coffee Revolution isn't your thing, we have plenty of spaces to eat across campus. Some of my favourites include Grill and Go, which is a burrito bar, New Leaf, a salad bar, and we have the view with Delhi up on the top floors of the SU that have a really nice view out over the city, and that's a 100% vegan and vegetarian cafe as well, which I really like. I'm going to pass you over to Kelton now, who's going to run us through some more of the bars we have in the Students' Union, as well as discussing student advice and support we offer for our students here too. So we are now back on the other side of the Students' Union, just by our Student Advice Centre. Now, the Student Advice Centre is an area where students can come for uh, impartial advice on a whole range of issues, everything from immigration to academic and welfare support, housing, anything like this, you can come to them and they will be able to help you out with it. This is kind of aided by the Student Services and Information Desk, which is sort of your one-stop shop for effectively kind of signposting to any of the university services that you may need. You can come to them with a problem and they'll be able to tell you who you need to get in touch with. A couple of the other services and facilities that are available right around this section of the SU includes the Student Job Shop, which is actually just down the end of this corridor there. The Student Job Shop is in association with our University Careers Service, which offers sort of uh, workshops and events, everything from kind of CV support to interview skills. And the Student Job Shop itself actually also lists a bunch of full and part-time work opportunities for you. So if you do want to kind of pick up a job, while you're studying at university or you're looking for a graduate job, that's always a great place to start. Another thing that is hosted within the SU is Smart Move Sheffield. Now this is an organization uh, created in association with the university between the SU and the uni, which is devoted to finding students who want to move out of their university halls into private accommodation to find a place for them that will kind of fit them and to make sure that they have a fair agreement with their landlord or their tenants agency. This is a really great organization that I made a use of in my second and my third year to find my houses. It made the whole process very, very easy. They have a whole kind of list of all the places that you might want to stay in Sheffield, and you can just kind of go from there. Now, I'm just going to take us outside now because there's a couple of things I'd like to show you. The first of those is the 301 Academic Skills Center. Now, 301 is effectively kind of, uh, once again, another one of those one-stop shops for any of the kind of academic skills support that you might want to have while you are at university. Now that can be everything from maths and statistics help to your note taking and essay writing. It offers a really kind of flexible modern space that you can just see sort of over my shoulder here um, for all of these services. They're fantastic. I used them quite a lot in my first year when I first arrived. I had taken a gap year and I was feeling a little bit rusty, a little bit out of touch on my kind of essay writing skills and they were able to help me write out with that. Now, we mentioned before a little bit about the kind of clubs and bars that are available at the Students' Union, but I'm just going to take you down the stairs now to show you a little bit of uh, just sort of the outdoor sections of these. So what you can see just below us is the Garden View Terrace outside of our kind of main student bar, Bar 1. Now, Bar 1 is directly below my feet right now. 
It is a really popular kind of hangout space for a lot of students. There's loads of space in there. Um, they have a very long bar where you can order drinks. They do fantastic burgers. It's another really popular place to come and kind of watch sports as well, whether there's football or rugby on, something like that. Uh, they'll always have kind of big screens up and they'll be projecting it. That's always a really great place to come for a kind of student buzz. In addition to bar one, there is also the uh, Interval Bar and Cafe. Now, Interval is uh, kind of has that lovely little green uh, space with the picnic benches over there that you can see. It's the brick building um, just on the side there. And it's a little bit more of a laid back space where they serve kind of traditional pub food and craft beers. And they will host all sorts of events throughout the year as well. Things like sort of film nights and kind of themed pizza nights, stuff like that. Um, they also have the Interval Jazz Night, which is my personal favorite event of all time at the SU, where they'd have kind of a live band in, people would be dancing, always had a fantastic atmosphere. I hope that's given you a slightly better impression of the kind of social spaces that we have around, as well as some of the support that is available to our students here. I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Um, I'm sorry that you can't join us on campus right now, but we hope to kind of welcome you on soon. But in the meantime, if you do have any questions, feel free to visit our Chat to Us service. This is a service where you can go online and kind of find all sorts of students who are currently studying at the university listed by subject area and ask them any questions you might have, um, you know, kind of about student life or the undergraduate experience, anything like that. But once again, I would like to thank you all for joining us. We hope to see you on campus soon.